I love a good cup of coffee, but could I be drinking too much of it? Should I cut it out before race day? Or is it gonna help me perform? I've even heard that it might help with my life expectancy. I mean, caffeine has been used in sport for decades, but there are still numerous myths surrounding both the positive and the negative effects of caffeine. So I feel it's time for a caffeine myth buster. And I'm gonna be asking the experts a precision fuel and hydration. And that means surely it's an excuse for another coffee, right? Not always. The origin of that myth comes from the fact that caffeine sensitivity increases when you abstain from it. So if you normally use caffeine, you build up a level of tolerance. Then when you come off it for a while, your sensitivity increases. And a lot of people think that that will give you an extra boost on the day. Now, technically, that's probably true. However, when you give up caffeine in the week before a race, if you drink it every day normally, you will suffer the cold turkey symptoms of headaches and feeling lethargic, maybe being irritable, and there's a trade-off in that. So although moderating your caffeine intake in the run-up to a race is generally what's recommended, it's not always beneficial to go completely cold turkey because the benefits outweigh, the, the costs outweigh the benefits. People think that caffeine will dehydrate you, and that's not strictly true. It is a diuretic, which means that it causes your kidneys to produce more urine. But there have been enough studies that have shown that the net benefit of drinking a volume of fluid like coffee with caffeine in it means that you, in terms of urinary output, you will pee out less overall than you've taken in. That doesn't make coffee or caffeinated drinks the ideal thing to hydrate with, and some people suffer more diuresis than others, but it doesn't mean that they should net dehydrate you. Caffeine will make you train harder some of the time, but it doesn't mean you should smash it before or during every single training session. There's a tolerance effect that happens, and if you overuse caffeine, then your body will become habituated to it and you'll fail to get the same level of effects. So although used um, in longer and harder training sessions or times when you really want to go at a maximum all-out effort can be beneficial, if you just use it all the time, it won't just make you train harder. Often, with a lot of things, athletes think if a small amount of something is good, more of it will be better. But there's always a dose response element to it. And the optimum dose for caffeine for perform enhancing performance is three to six milligrams per kilogram of body weight. There are some individuals who can benefit from a little bit more than that. But on the whole, if you go beyond that, you're more likely to get problems with anxiety, jitters, maybe even heart palpitations in some people. So it's definitely not the case that more is better when it comes to caffeine consumption. People report that if they have caffeine during a race, it makes them want to stop and go to the toilet. And that is probably, in most cases, because caffeine stimulates the gut and increases motility, which means that it speeds up the transit of your um, GI system, meaning that it can have a laxative effect on some people. And if you're one of those people, then caffeine is probably not something to be using during a race. It doesn't seem to affect everyone though, and there's, but there's enough anecdotal and scientific evidence out there to suggest that this is actually a thing for some people. That's exactly the wrong way around. So cola contains about 8 to 10 milligrams of caffeine per 100 mil. Whereas a caffeine gel, a single caffeine gel, usually contains between about 50 and 100 milligrams of caffeine. So cola is actually a relatively low dose of caffeine, whereas gels tend to be considerably higher. Around the world, most cultures seem to limit caffeine consumption to adults only. And whilst there's no really, really strong evidence as to it being particularly bad for children, one of the big reasons we think that it's limited use in children is that it disrupts sleep because they are smaller of body size, it can have an outsized effect on them and obviously sleep is so critical for their growth and development that especially under 12s are not recommended to, to use much caffeine at all. 
thing about cups of coffee is it's quite difficult to quantify the amount of caffeine that's in them. Some smaller, shorter coffees might contain as little as 30 or 40 milligrams of caffeine, whereas a very large brewed coffee might contain 200 milligrams. So the range is very, is, is very great. The reason that caffeinated sports nutrition products are useful for athletes during races, apart from the practicality that it's difficult to stop at a coffee shop on the way round, is that you know exactly what dosage you're getting. So coffee can be used as an ergogenic aid, but generally it's going to be better to use dosed products if you're using it for performance in a race. Every day when you pick up the newspaper, you read another bold headline claiming that something, caffeine, alcohol, dark chocolate, whatever it is, is going to either add or subtract numerous years from your life expectancy and normally what that is is journalists extrapolating findings from niche scientific articles and overblowing them in a way that they were never intended to be interpreted so there's no way that you can make to make a categoric blank blanket statement like that there is evidence that caffeine consumed in moderation is generally good for most people but i think that's about as much as you can say you certainly can't claim it's going to add a decade to your life Well, I am just glad that I don't have to give up my coffee, but I'd love to know if anything surprised you guys there. Do let us know in the comments section below and if you enjoyed it or if you enjoy drinking coffee, give us a thumbs up, like, and remember, you can subscribe by hitting the globe.